Dairy producers generate large amounts of nutrients from feed and fertilizer brought onto the farm that ends up in the manure of which dairy cows produce. These nutrients present in dairy manure are receiving higher levels of attention for increasing dairy farm profits due to its fertilizer value. This is important not only for profits, but also for becoming better stewards of the environment. Extension surveys have shown that many producers want more assistance in understanding how to maintain and efficiently manage and utilize manure nutrients. With regulation agencies increasing inspections of operations of all sizes, understanding how to control risk associated with manure nutrients during weather events or during handling, storage, and application is imperative from an environmental stewardship aspect. Weather events that can cause environmental concerns are snowmelts that move nutrients to water sources rather than infiltrating into the ground when frozen. Rainfall occurrences can also be of concern when clean rainwater is not diverted from manure-laden water. Notice the rain gutters on the barns separating all clean roof rainwater that has potential to mix with cow yard manure. The end goal is that all roof runoff is diverted into a gutter system and then drained from any environmentally sensitive areas. Thus, the end product here remains clean rainwater. Cow yard or feedlots also need containment practices. Rainwater that falls on these lots needs to be diverted to settling basins or manure collection pits. A major goal would be to eliminate any nutrient-laden discharge from cow yards or feedlots by using better containment practices. This stage example shows a runoff barrier that contains runoff that otherwise would have allowed nutrients to discharge into a man-made conveyance, a road ditch in this case. The producer designed a drive-over curb that directs nutrient-laden water into this settling basin, which is a great practice to save valuable nutrients and allows all nutrients to settle even during heavy rainfall or snowfall events. Here is another example of a curb that further directs cow yard runoff into the same settling basin. Frequent cleaning of cow yards will reduce the amount of nutrients that would flow into the containment basin during weather events. A settling basin is designed to settle most nutrients during a weather event that can later be discharged to a grass filter strip or irrigated or spread out into the field using a small sump pump that can handle manure solids with some type of pipe or hose. This video shows manure nutrients being discharged into a grass filter strip that can be used for pasture or hay. A manure sump pump and lay flat hose is used to discharge manure laden water down every fifth corn row or so in this field. This allows many nutrients that would have otherwise gone into a road ditch to be properly used for crop production. This upright irrigator achieves about the same goal. Manure settling basins are a good option for cow yards and feedlots to manage nutrients. Rainwater here can mix with manure solids. Though difficult to see, a second containment structure settles solids and then filters into another containment structure to further settle before being released into a grass filter strip. This view shows both the manure pit where manure is pushed into from the cow yard and free stalls. The portion closer to the camera is the settling basin with the arrow depicting where the manure laden water flows in. From this basin, the overflow is then allowed to further settle again before being discharged into the grass filter strip. A very common way for producers using sand bedded freestalls is to use a two-stage sand separation system. Once sand laden manure flows approximately 40 feet, the sand is then separated and the manure solids and liquid can flow into another pit. Well, we have a two-stage system and uh, all the fresh manure goes into the first stage and at that point it gets settled out. The sand and solids settle to the bottom, the water rises to the top and it runs over our wall right here and runs down to our second stage lagoon. So we, we have no runoff with the system. Anything that's going to run over this first pit will flow into the second lagoon. We haul everything from the first stage with a slinger spreader and we either use a skid loader to load it or a manure auger and the second stage is all pumped out with, uh, through a custom pumper, custom operator. Parlor wastewater has one, uh, one straight shot to the second lagoon because it's mostly water.
Milk house and or polar wastewater can have heavy levels of manure solids. These solids should be discharged into a pit or a well-designed filter system. Caution should be exercised to make sure these solids don't make their way to a water of the state, a tile line, or another man-made conveyance that would be a detriment to the environment. Manure is not the only nutrient issue on dairy farms. Many nutrients, especially phosphorus, are brought onto a dairy via various feedstuffs. Runoff from feed produced on the farm can occur around bales, bunkers, and silage piles during weather events. Silage leachate can have high biological oxygen demand in streams as well as have high levels of nutrient that create environmental concerns. In the same respect as cow yard runoff, steps should be taken to prevent leachate from reaching surface waters. Once in storage, there are considerable costs to further handle and land apply manure. The biggest of these being depreciation and custom handling costs, followed by labor and interest. It is important for producers to understand that getting manure into storage has a lot of cost, the largest by far being labor, followed by interest and equipment and structure depreciation. In this limited study, we looked at systems using tie stalls, mattresses and waterbeds, two-stage sand systems, one-stage sand systems, and dried manure solids. When combined, the total cost per cow to store, handle, and apply manure was just over $300 a cow, with variation depending on the type of systems producers used. The blue portion of the bars is the cost to get the manure into the storage, and the red portion is to get the manure out of storage and land applied. Um, on our crops, um, we use very little com commercial fertilizer. Most of it's our manure. Um, and last, this past year's yields were anywhere from 175 to 200. Um, our hay was also uh, very good crops this year. We took four crops off. I don't I haven't calculated the tonnage yet, but. Um, we'll do that this winter. Um, corn silage is excellent. Good quality of feed. The best way to utilize manure and to reduce risk is by acknowledging the value of the manure nutrients to the cropping system. This is best achieved by taking manure samples for nutrient analysis, whether a quick grab sample is shown here or via a more extensive sampling program. Once samples have been analyzed, you can see the nutrient content. In this example, showing two different dairy farms, we see similar nutrient values, but small differences that are due to how the manure is stored and handled. For example, in dairy one, our analysis shows 21.2 pounds of ammonium N per thousand gallons. This N source is immediately available for plant use, while the organic fraction will mineralize over time and slowly become available for crop use. Phosphorus is 12.2 pounds per thousand gallons, and potassium is 26.2 pounds per thousand gallons. If the field has a long history of manure application, we would consider both the P and K to be 100% available to the crop, just like commercial fertilizer sources. If we take this a step further, we would assign a value to our nutrients. For example, in the fall of 2015, nitrogen is running about 40 cents a pound or a unit, P205 about 50 cents a unit, and K2O about 34 cents a unit. If we multiply our total nitrogen in our first example by the 40 cents per pound, we achieve $15.44 per thousand gallons worth of nitrogen value. If we multiply our phosphorus by 50 cents a pound, that comes out to about $6.10. And if we multiply our K2O or potassium by 34 cents a pound, that's $8.90. Those three numbers when totaled add up to about $30.45 per thousand gallons of manure. This value helps to offset the cost of manure storage as explained earlier in the video. Now that we know what is in the manure, we can use this analysis in conjunction with soil tests for P and K and crop nitrogen needs to make a land application plan.
Dairy manure is a valuable nutrient resource. This video has provided a glimpse at practices designed to reduce environmental risk and to enhance the value of your manure source for crop production. The dairy team at Iowa State University Extension and Outreach can provide additional resources to help manage manure as well as other dairy production issues. You can find us on the web at www.extension.iastate.edu front slash dairy team.